I recognize the member for Carleton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I must say that it is an honour to rise on this motion. Um, I hail from Carleton County, and in our county, uh, we are privileged to have a war memorial located outside the courthouse in our shire town that contains the names of 12 Carleton County men that were killed in this conflict at Vimy Ridge on the uh, 9th of April, 1917. Um, I'm even further proud to say, Mr. Speaker, that as the son of a World War II veteran and a 35-year member of the Royal Canadian Legion, it gives me great pleasure to stand today to speak to this motion. But it is not my motion alone, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when we were developing this concept, we sought the advice of numerous advisors and the military advisory group uh, that has been so helpful on other matters such as the Highway of Heroes issue and other military issues were consulted. Uh, I'm proud to say that uh, Paul Hansen from my community and uh, a resident of Grafton and Bob McFarlane of Wakefield who are in the gallery today played a vital role in the development of this motion. And those two men, uh, Mr. Speaker, represent New Brunswick's only chapter of Anavets. And we were very fortunate to have uh, support in drafting this motion from veterans organizations around the province, from members of the Royal Canadian Legion, as mentioned from the Anavets group, other military advisors, uh, consultations with the folks in Gagetown. And we've referenced uh, great Canadian historians such as Pierre Burton and Jack Granistein, as well as the Heritage Canada sites in the drafting of this motion. And as we reach an end to the third week of this current sitting, a sitting where we have seen partisanship uh, divide us on some issues. I would ask all members of the House to participate in this debate and support this motion because it is, of, uh, it is not a partisan motion. It is a, it is a motion in recognition of the great sacrifice of our men and women uh, in World War I, specifically those that took part in the Battle of Vimy Ridge. And within a very short period of time, Mr. Speaker, we will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of Vimy Ridge, uh, a battle that is epic in Canadian history. And if I could just read uh, the opening paragraph of the motion. During the First World War, Vimy Ridge and its surrounding area in northern France was seized and held by the German army in September 1914, providing them with a commanding view of French, British, and Canadian forces. As, as, as implied by that paragraph, Mr. Speaker, the German forces had a strategic uh, advantage and as the primarily French forces tried to retake Vimy Ridge in the early years of World War I, uh, they suffered tremendous casualties. Uh, it is perhaps the bloodiest site in, in World War I. And in Carleton County, Mr. Speaker, we have our war memorial. Uh, 12 victims, 12 men who were killed in action at Vimy Ridge are listed on that memorial. And as an amateur genealogist, I've had an opportunity to travel around Carleton County and, and York County, uh, several uh, small and large graveyards. And you can't do that without being overcome by the names and the ages on the military headstones that you see in virtually all cemeteries around the province. And if you take the time to read them, a large number of, of, those, of those individuals, uh, you'll see April 9th, you'll see April 10th, April 11th, April 12th, because the Battle of Vimy Ridge raged on for a number of days. And many of the men that were wounded at Vimy Ridge 
uh, and perhaps did, were not killed, died later of their wounds uh, in the days and weeks that followed. Many were transported home to Canada and later died of their wounds. And if you think for a moment, Mr. Speaker, the magnitude of the sacrifice paid at Vimy Ridge, the number of casualties, the number of killed and wounded. Um, it was a long time ago. No one in this legislature was alive when Vimy Ridge, uh, when the battle raged. But if we think to our own lifetime, uh, the events of 9-11 in New York, uh, approximately 2,500 victims of that terrible act. But those numbers are dwarfed by the numbers from Vimy Ridge. Thousands of Canadians killed, thousands of Canadians wounded. And those, that payment in blood was, was, press, was preceded by French forces who paid similar prices. Thousands of uh, French forces killed and wounded at Vimy Ridge. And as we think of those numbers, we have to reflect that back in the time of the First World War, Canada was a much smaller country. We had a much smaller population, about a third of the population uh, that we currently have today. And those weren't just names and numbers on a battlefield. Those were fathers and sons and brothers taken from families and communities in all parts of our country. When word began to trickle home, and in those days it wasn't by internet or long distance, it was by telegram in most cases, Canadians and New Brunswickers began to learn for the first time the amazing cost that was paid for our victory at Vimy Ridge. And those were communities all over Canada, all over New Brunswick, large and small, north and south, urban and rural, Communities like Lancaster and Grand Bay, Sussex, Elma, Hampton, Kingsclear, Heartland, Gagetown, Florenceville, men from all parts of our province, from all parts of our country, paid the ultimate price and uh, bought our victory at Vimy Ridge with their blood. Now, while we weren't uh, around when that battle was fought, Mr. Speaker. I'm of an age when I can remember uh, some First World War veterans. And uh, one that stands out in my mind was Duncan Roy. And Duncan Roy spoke with a Scottish accent. He had a handlebar mustache with both ends twisted up. And Duncan Roy received the military medal and bar. And what that signifies uh, in the First World War. And what that citation uh, indicates, Mr. Speaker, that uh, the military medal is just below the Victoria Cross, and by having the mi military medal, or MM and bar, indicates that Duncan Roy was in a situation where he won that citation on two occasions. And Wash Craig, uh, the patron of Craig Manufacturing in Heartland was a First World War veteran. And he came back after the war. He was uh, fortunate to have survived the conflicts and established a business in his community, as so many men did who came back from the First World War. And we can credit them with building New Brunswick and building our counties and our communities into what they have become today. But while Mr. Craig was fortunate to return, so many others didn't. So many families paid a price, so many communities paid a price. And in a, at the turn of the century and in the years of the First World War, Mr. Speaker, you know, Carleton County had a population of about 15,000 people. And you knew your neighbors and you knew who owned the stores and you knew the folks that you worked with and you visited with them on Sundays. And just think for a moment, because the maritime provinces and because of our history uh, for coastline battalions, we were overrepresented in the Canadian forces in the four Canadian divisions that took part at Vimy Ridge. 
Think for a minute what your community would be like today if that number of men were taken from it. Hundreds of New Brunswickers paid the price at Vimy Ridge. Thousands of Canadians paid the ultimate price at Vimy Ridge. And it's important for us to recognize and remember this sacrifice. Vimy is the site of our nation's most iconic war memorial. My colleague from Gagetown has, has visited the site on a number of occasions. And it is vital that we not only remember the price that has been paid by the Canadian Corps, but that we get it right. So in drafting this motion, not only did we consult with individuals like the ones that I've mentioned that may be in the gallery today, but we also consulted with the Milton Gregg Center. And Milton Gregg, as many of you know, is, is one of New Brunswick's greatest sons and a recipient of the Victoria Cross. We've consulted with the Canadian War Museum so that we not only get the facts right, Mr. Speaker, but that we get the chronological order right because Vimy Ridge and the tactics used there and the fact that for the first time Canadian forces were under Canadian command in such a large engagement is important that we get it in the right order because Canadian forces trained for weeks and months in preparation for the attack at Vimy Ridge and while our allies were unsuccessful by noon hour on the first day of an attack that was launched at 5.30 a.m., three of the Canadian divisions had already reached their objectives at a terrible price. So we had to get it right. And I want to thank those people that, has help, that have helped us in the drafting of this motion. And I want to help, I want to thank my colleague from Fredericton West Hanwell. And I want to thank the veterans and military advisors and the representatives from the Royal Canadian Legion and from ANAVETS and from other organizations for taking part. And I want to ask all members to put partisanship aside while we're considering this motion. And as we near the 100th anniversary of perhaps Canada's greatest victory in the First World War, I want to ask them to support this motion so that as a province we can proclaim April 9th as Vimy Ridge Day here in New Brunswick. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this motion was introduced a week ago. Uh, members of this House have had a chance to read it and consider it. And I implore upon them the importance of supporting this motion as we prepare for the 100th anniversary. And thank you very much.